YouTube, what's up, man? Sama Mike, through SB.co. We're back. We're talking uh, weight loss, fat loss, how to get shredded. I'm 65 pounds down, and I want to help you. Obviously, a lot of inquiries and questions on Instagram, so follow me there, Sama Mike with two Ks. Um, be sure to subscribe, like this thing, and we're going to dive in to help you on your weight loss. Let's get shredded. During this cut, yeah. were you tracking? So a lot of questions like uh, carnivore diet, keto diet, fat loss pill, what's the secret? Did you just track protein? Um, I've talked about it a little bit before, but basically in the beginning, I was just trying to get in the routine of eating more whole foods and cooking more. So we got to build habits over time, step by step. And one, you got to like be self-aware enough to know that you're not overloading yourself. So if you're door dashing McDonald's every day and eating taquitos from 7-Eleven, and now you're trying to go straight to like a professional bodybuilding diet where you're tracking every grain of rice, that's a big commitment and a big jump. What I just started to do is like, all right, I'm no longer gonna door dash. I'm gonna drink more water. Two basic rules, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for four to eight weeks and build that habit over time. Then we started to dive in and uh, long answer short is yeah, I tracked, I tracked everything. I weighed, measured and tracked every meal. But then once you start to find a flow, depending on how strict your goals are, if you're eating the same meals every day, you don't have to measure or you don't have to track every single thing, you just measure, right? I know how much Greek yogurt I'm gonna eat for dessert, how many berries are, uh, I'm gonna weigh out. But yes, I measured and tracked every single thing meticulously for weeks uh, to build into that habit. Was it easy to cut out fats or carbs? So when we're talking about pure weight loss, just losing weight. Protein intake matters to preserve that muscle, keep you satiated, and then calories matter. Um, in terms of ratio of carbs to fat, a lot of that is personal preference in terms of what you enjoy eating, um, what allows you to stick to your diet, what keeps you satiated, what keeps you full. And then it gets a little different when you're talking about uh, sports performance or any performance in the gym itself. Personally, um, if I can monitor my carbs and keep them moderate to high, and keep my fats moderate to low, I tend to be able to eat high volume foods and still feel pretty good in the gym. Because again, performance matters to me a little bit. Not that I'm looking to be competitive, but I wanna be able to lift and train hard. <clears throat> and often when you go too high of fat and lower the carbs way down, because one of them's gotta go in terms of uh, calories, you gotta take them away from somewhere, I'm gonna end up feeling a little bit drained in my workouts. You're gonna feel tired either way. Um, you're not gonna be able to perform optimally. Obviously, we're taking in less energy than we're expending, so you're gonna feel a little worn down. But if I start to mess with those ratios too bad, I start to get a little tired. And I think that's where something like keto, yes, you can lose weight on keto if your calories are locked in. Yes, you can lose weight on carnivore if your calories are locked in, although I'm not a fan of either of those in particular. Um, but in terms of performance, powerlifting, bodybuilding, any real sport, basketball, soccer, etc., cetera, uh, carbohydrates are gonna be your friend. really a question or like a comment people yeah. just didn't know he has so much aesthetic under those goddamn oversized tees I don't know what it is but like I think the reason people join the fitness industry is always different people talk about like going to the gym be, to like raise their self-esteem and confidence and whether that formulates itself in a physical or more of an emotional connection mine was always been more of an emotional connection to my confidence and self-esteem regardless of what I look like my self-esteem, I'm human just like y'all, goes up and down. But the physical, like, yeah, I feel a little better in my skin, like being leaner, but like, I kind of feel the same. Like, I haven't changed. The confidence of like who I am and who I am and not as a person has been the same. You know, that's why I do therapy and that's why I talk about mental health. And that's why I like work on who I am and trying to improve to be a better person for those that are around me in the world and for the audience, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not one to like work out shirtless. I'm not one to wear trap cuts all the time. I didn't get into the fitness to show off my skills or my body. Um, it's just never been what I am or what I do. And that's no knock on anyone else. Anyone else can do and, and, and act as they like. I don't think it's negative necessarily, but it's just not who I am. So I rock baggy tees because that's what I rocked when I played basketball. I rock baggy tees because they're comfy. I rock baggy tees because I like them. 
And then uh, if I got a little muscle underneath, that's for future wifey. The leaner you were getting, did you feel achier? Not really. Uh, my training, like volume in general, the big thing a lot of people ask about programming stuff is that it's over the last year and a half. I went from taking a year off lifting um, for like personal mental health reasons and building the gym, obviously in the pandemic, all that collided. So I didn't have training. Um, so it's not like my volume and intensity were insanely high and then I'm dieting, taking away the energy. They were kind of both slowly building together, although opposite goals, I got to build muscle um, as my calorie deficit was kind of disappearing. So um, honestly, I feel really good. I was just telling Big Marcus behind me, like I'm handling very moderate volume, decent intensity, and my frequency is moderate right now in terms of my lifespan of training. Because when people say like, hi, volume day, I, I don't really like that shit because it's all like, it's all like relative. If you're used to doing singles and now you're doing three by fives, that's high volume. If you're doing 10 by 10s all the time and now you do three by fives, now you're low volume, right? So it's all relative. For me, I'm, I'm moderate intensity, moderate volume, moderate frequency right now. And so I, I feel really good. I feel really good. My back gets a little stiff here and there, but that's just, you know, 15 years of high level basketball and 12 years of powerlifting, you're not gonna feel perfect, but generally speaking, I feel good. So I think if you warm up properly, I think if you manage your volume properly, you won't necessarily get achy or anything different during a diet. It doesn't have to be, it's all up here, man. You don't have to get insanely weaker. Like, yes, less energy's in, so I'm gonna have less energy to expend. Yes, my leverages are gonna change as your belt fits different, you got less cushion for the push in. But truth is, is like, a lot of it's up here, you know, and I hate to be that life guru guy, but, if, if you don't want to feel achy, if you don't want to just get totally weak, if you don't want to feel like a pansy, you don't got to. You don't got to. People want to know. What do the people want to know? How the fuck do you do it? How, how do I do, do it? it? How did you do it? That is like, uh, people just ask why and how. And I hate the answer because it doesn't help you as much as I want. If you check our past videos, I go into like exactly how I did it. But like the truth is consistency. You don't make any excuses. I And, and I... I hate to like contradict myself because I don't like to be the tough guy because I don't think it's a tough thing and I don't think it's a motivational life coach thing, but like I didn't eat cake on my birthday. We didn't go out for dinner on my birthday. I, I cooked at home with my mother on my birthday. So like, do you have to make small sacrifices to stay consistent? Yeah. I didn't drink alcohol for eight months. You know, there, there are things that need to be sacrificed to reach your goals. And at the end of the day, it's what decision are you gonna make and which one's harder for you? Is it that hard to say no to a beer to a buddy? Or is it that hard to say no to your goals? Because as soon as you say yes to that beer, you're saying no to your goals. And for me, um, it's easy. It's easy to, to lock in my goals. I, other people ask like, what was the hardest part and all these things like, truth is it wasn't. Like it's hard to be consistent, but all you have to do is show up. You don't need 10 out of 10 to be perfect. You need like a seven out of 10 effort every single day, seven out of 10 consistency every single day um, for years. Not for weeks, for years. You can, you know, it takes years to gain muscle, it takes years to gain strength. It only takes a couple weeks to burn fat. So the, the why and the how and the how did I do it? I just tracked my food and I was just, I was locked in. You lock it in, you, you put that bitch on autopilot, you put it on cruise control and you, you let her rock. They asked for the full day eating. I think we can do it now. I do worry about us getting yelled at at a grocery store, but I guess we can risk it. I'm just awkward and I don't like to piss people off. We could call ahead and maybe see if it's cool. Sometimes they just get weird, but we could definitely do like a grocery haul, full day of eating combo. Um, you guys aren't going to be impressed. It's not exciting, but uh, maybe it'll lend you some ideas. I'm also not like a chef, so I'm not whipping out these pizzas and shit. I'm eating some basic boy stuff, you know, beef, Greek yogurt, veggies, fruit, protein bar. That's literally all I eat every day, water. Uh, my, new, my new bop is uh, liquid death mango. Hits. Liquid death mango hits. I like a little bubbly, obviously hydration, but things are basic. So we will we'll try to do one for you. Uh, be sure to subscribe, stick around. We'll, we'll do a full day of eating, but don't expect fucking Bam, what's his name? Bam? Emerald. Yeah. Don't expect Emerald. You'd rather have big calves or big goddamn ding dong? I think there's diminishing returns on both. I don't know where my cock stands. I don't really like meat gaze or meat compare often, but I'd imagine that if your cock's that big, it's gonna be an inconvenience. It's kind of like your dumper. Like, yeah, my ass is nice and it's a good accessory and it fits out my, fills out my shorts. But if your ass is too big, it's probably uncomfortable. I'm in like pretty proportion, I think, from top to bottom. You've seen the statue of, is it David? Or statue of whoever? And his pee-pee looks a little small. I don't want to judge another man, but he could probably use a little bit extra. If it's too big. Or he's a, a grower, not a shepherd. I guess they've never really made a statue fully erect. It'd probably be awkward, so you don't really know. 
what he's doing. And like you've seen the visuals, well, you've seen the visuals where they're like sculpting it and the person's actually standing there for like eight hours, like three days in a row. It's probably hard to stay erect before Cialis was a thing back then. I don't know, dude, my calves look good. They're kind of veiny. That's not bad, right? I haven't done calves ever. Well, not once in my life. So maybe David was a grower. I'm sorry to judge him based on what he showed us. Maybe it was a cool, cool breeze out when they were doing it. That's also possible. Maybe he took a cold shower because they probably didn't have water heaters in ancient Rome either. Not to sound like an egotistical guy, but I'm pretty happy with both my man stuff and my calves at this point in time. made in the kitchen? That's a pretty good question. A lot of people asked it. The issue with a lot of this stuff is people say things with good intention, but then how it's received, right? Communication is different than talking because communication is based on how my words are received to you, where talking is based on my words. And so when you like say stuff like that, or, or you just throw these slogans out, I know the intentions well and to help um, to make people not do crunches all day to try to show their six pack. But the truth is abs are just a muscle like everything else. So they can grow or they can shrink. And then our fat, we can gain fat or we can lose fat. And depending on how much muscle you have and how little fat you have is how much definition or how much muscle will show. It's the same with the biceps, same with the quads, same with anything else. Um, so I do think that you can build your abs. Uh, compound movements do help. Uh, learning how to properly brace and make rigid your core while you're doing a squat and deadlift and overhead press are great. Um, but some weighted crunches, some rollouts, some uh, hanging leg raises, some weighted planks. There's a lot of different things we could do under tough resistance to build our muscles uh, in our abdominals. And then losing fat, um, in terms of the kitchen quote, it, it is more important how you eat. Um, it's gonna be very difficult to up your cardio to the extent that you're going to burn the amount of calories that you want. Especially as a performance athlete or even a bodybuilder trying to keep as much muscle, I suggest manipulating calories way before cardio. And I know your favorite pro bodybuilder is on YouTube doing an hour a day on the stair mill, I think that's trash. I think you're better off, again, manipulating your calories and doing very low intensity cardio so then it doesn't affect your energy and your mood in the gym. You're better off using all those calories towards hard training um, than pushing yourself on a step mill because that's not gonna help preserve as much muscle. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it, man. Two new videos a week. Be sure to subscribe, give this thing a thumbs up. Share, uh, it helps a lot when you share this thing out. Comment below what you guys want us to cover coming up. We'll full day of eating we're gonna get to, a back and bicep workout for sure. Um, we'll catch you in the next one. Solid Mike, we over me, be a part of something bigger than yourself. I'll catch you in the next one.